You're watching Drake Queen Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys and gals, Nery here from Drake Wayne Gaming, and so if you mount Twitter the Gaming Dragon, today I'm coming back at you with a Let's Play episode of Liar. So y'all, let's go ahead and jump right back into it, shall we? Alarm chain, you are up, and let's go. Alrighty. Like a learning experience? Exactly. They sit there for a moment longer before Adrius breaks the silence, wiping his eyes. Can you sing to me like you used to? Elena looks over at Rainer, who still lies still who lies still on the bed. His soft snore is a quiet ambience for their conversation. Quietly? All right. But then you're going right back to bed, little prince. He eagerly nods and then rests on her. Elena intones a small tune to test her vocals before humming a song. Huh. Hmm. Interesting. Alright. Okay. Adrius bounds down the corridor, his small hooves clopping against the smooth stone flooring. The prince skids to a stop at one of the windows and brings himself up with his arms to look over the balustrade. There, just over the horizon, he can see carts, wagons, and carriages slowly rolling over the hills of the northern run. He drops down from his lifted position and continues to bolt down the hallway, almost running into a servant carrying a box. Sorry! <laughs> he twists around while running to apologize, the servant shaking their head in bemusement. As he runs, he keeps his focus on the carriages, watching as they draw closer. The beams and pillars on the balcony pass by in a blur as he continues his sprint. And he stops. If it wasn't for his youthful agility, he would have surely fell over coming to a stop so suddenly. His eyes stay focused on the caravan and he walks up to the balustrade once more. This time he stands on the base, planting his hooves on the small slab of stone near the bottom. There's not as many wagons now. Some of them were carrying goods that needed to be traded, so of course that was, this was inevitable. Still, Hadrius knew those wagons should have come back, empty or not. Surely there should be more in, that, in the entourage. He knows there should be more. Then he notices the soldiers. It's hard to distinguish them from the squires and stable boys as both trudge alongside the carts. Some of them look dreadfully tired while others ride in the carts, their heads down. Adrius can even see what looks to be injured men. Some laying on the floor of wagons, others being helped along by their fellow men, arms around each other's shoulders. Adrius starts to feel a lump forming in his throat, but the fear instead settles in his stomach. It churns and twists inside of him as his eyes dance over each cluster of men. Some of the carts they are being carried away in look new. Not made from the same wood as the ones from around Lyre. Lyre. Jenny rounds the corner, slowly walking down the hall. This is where everything kind of fell apart for the little prince, I suppose. Adrius bites his cheek when he see, bites his cheek when he sees the last wagon roll over the hillside, not followed by any others. Doing another scan, Adrius realizes that among all these things, one thing stands out to him the most. Come along, my little prince. Your mother and father have returned. Yes, it's a question he wanted an answer to the moment he first looked out the window. A question that he's been asking himself since he first laid eyes upon the entourage. Where's the royal carriage? Adrius drops from the support, lands on his hands and knees. My prince? He ignores her, rising in a sprint, almost tripping over himself. His breath is fast and his legs are unsteady as he darts down the corridor. All Jenny would be able to hear is the fast clopping of hooves against smooth stone flooring. Rainer stands outside the door to Adrius's chambers. His gloved hand rests limply on the, on the antler-shaped handle of the door. Adrius, please. You haven't left your room in days. He speaks through the crack in the center of the doors, his muzzle almost pressed against it. There's no response from the inside. The servants tell me you haven't been eating. Your mother. Your mother wouldn't want this. Still no response. So you're going to do nothing? Adrius stands in the doorway to his father's room, the king's expression turning into a frown. That is not what I said. And yet it's what will happen anyway. Adrius barges past him into the room, his father stepping back and letting him in, closing the door behind him with a thud. 
Oh, of course. You know, I'd really rather you question me in front of the entire court than whatever this is. This? This is a private conversation where more can be said than what's spoken in front of a court. Oh, he's older now. Or do you not like that? Rainer's nose twitches and he walks over to the wine by the cupboard. What are your issues? Ask Leif. I'm sure he'll tell you everything. I'm sure he tells you everything. Rainer's shoulders slump and he lets out a sigh. He finishes pouring two cups of red wine and turns to bring one to Adrius. Not those issues. Adrius, now sitting on the end of the bed, takes the cup and rests it in his lap, holding it with both hands. My issue lies with the fact that you refuse to take any action. Here we are in the time of peace, but it's not like that everywhere. You think I don't know this? Adrius, I'm doing everything in my power to solve the problems to our south. Driz has absolute control over the territory where the heart of the problem is. Until they can take action, my hands are tied. Adrius gestures with his hand towards the south. Laws be damned. The problem is bleeding into our lands and causing the suffering of our people. With each day that passes, they grow stronger. That barren wasteland keeps spilling them onto our lands, and you want to sit there and say we're powerless? Rainer lets out a sigh and pinches the bridge of his nose. We need to fight back against this problem, with or without Driz's permission. I know that the small steps I take in order to solve these problems can go unappreciated, but it's the only route we can take. So you know the reason why, then? Adrius. Driz has no concern for the problems in the canyons. It doesn't affect their citizens nearly as much as ours. King Aaron sits on his throne daily and does nothing to help. And yet we are forbidden from causing conflict beyond our own borders. King Aaron doesn't care. Raynard looks as if he's going to start lecturing Adrius, but he holds back. They sit there in silence for a moment, but Adrius doesn't let the silence hang in the air for long. Do you remember Mother's funeral? Rainer breathes in deeply and exhales, closing his eyes. Like it was yesterday. I remember everything all too vividly. It was about a week after her murder. All the lords and ladies from all over Lyre traveled day and night to pay their respects and mourn. After that, after that was the private burial. She wanted to be buried on the hill just outside of our garden, so that's what we did. What is the point of all this? Every noble from Braden's Vale to Grimrock came to pay respects to your wife. My mother. And yet not a single word was heard from King Aaron. He doesn't care. Mother's blood was spilt on his sands, and we haven't heard from your supposed friends since. Enough. You give this issue so little attention that it's safe to assume you don't care either. It's like you've given up. Quiet! You mourned her, but now you don't even like to talk about her. You're going to keep bottling this up, then eventually spill it on someone. You don't even speak of her around me, your son! Just hide in your castle while people meet the same fate as her! Adrius's chest rises with each breath as he now standing from his seat, wine glass slammed on the end table. Rainer just stands there silently. His face has traces of anger, which slowly fade away, almost going unnoticed by Adrius. Well? Still no response from Rainer, his head lowered. Adrius makes his way to the door and goes to turn the knob, angry tears forming at the corners of his eyes. Why did you kill me? Adrius stops turning the knob, a chill running up his spine, bristling the fur on the back of his neck. He turns around to stare at his father, eyes wide open with a confused expression plastered on his face. What? It was here, in this very room. You killed your own father. Father, what are you talking about? Is this some sort of cruel joke? Rainer doesn't answer, which causes Adrius to become even more confused. You've lost Lyle as well. The statement hits Adrius a little harder. I, I didn't... I didn't lose him. You've paved the road ahead. You'll never be able to go back. Tears now stream down Adrius's face as Rainer stands there like a statue, spatting off these cryptic messages. Adrius... I loved you more than life itself. You don't even know what you're running. F you don't even know what you're running from anymore. Ah! <laughs> Adrius.
Adrius lunges forward in his bed, the deer's chest heaving as he chokes on his first deep breath. What? My father? What was I? Sitting up in bed, he pulls the sheets closer to him, gripping them in his fist. The nightmare he just had, he just had fades away as suddenly as it came, like water evaporating on a hot summer's day. His father was angry with him. No, disappointed. Arguing. Adrius sits there for a moment, his mind desperately grasping the air for the dream, but to no avail. Adrius tosses the covers from his body, the cold morning air rushing over his fur. Looking outside the window, he realizes that it's closer to noon than morning. He must have slept in. He brings his hand to his bare chest, sliding his fingers across it until he finds the necklace hung around his neck. Rubbing the soft part of his fingers over the piece of gold, he can feel the shape of the antlers on its base. It was his mother's. After this, he brings his hands up to his head, firmly rubbing the area where his antler is missing. A small bit of bone still lingers, but hasn't had enough time to heal properly in order to start growing once more. He then rubs his muzzle, the scar still feeling fresh, but is healed for the most part. It's nice to not need the bandages anymore, as they were becoming a pain for him. Not only that, but as much as he wished he had both antlers, it's nice to have one less sharp, pointy object that accidentally ran through the headboard of the bed. Adrius turns to look at the bed he's sitting on. His father's bed. The king's chambers. The entire room had been given to him upon ascending the throne. Of course, only after they'd managed to fix the place up. Adrius's own room, however, is still being renovated. So this is the only place he can sleep for the time being. It's only natural that he does sleep here. He's the king, after all. His own room is merely a personal choice. Throwing his legs over the right side of the bed, his hooved feet touch the floor below and rest for a moment. A sharp head pain overcomes him, and he arches his back, leaning his head down between his legs. He takes a sharp breath in through his teeth while clenching them. As he's recovering, there's a knock on the door. Leif? It is my king! Adrius looks down at himself, seeing that he's only in his undergarments. It's only Leif. No need to, so no need to look presentable. Come in. Adrius hears the jingle of keys and then the sound of the door unlocking. A loud thud as the mechanisms fall into place. Leaf pushes the door open and shuffles into the room. He then braces the other side and pushes it closed. Good morning, your majesty. I take it there was no need to wear the bandages. Adrius shuffles back onto the bed, covering his waist with part of the blanket. I assume so, considering I didn't bleed all over the linens. That's very good to hear. Will you allow me to examine the, um... He points up at the top of Adrius's head. Of course. Adrius leans his head down for the bird to take a closer look. Leaf takes a close look at the area where the antler is broken off, brushing aside the fur around the wound. He then gently pokes the small bit left behind. Any pain? A little bit. How about if I do this? Leaf presses down firmly on the top, which causes a small shock of pain, which then spreads around the area. Ow! Yes! Adrius pulls away from the bird, slightly lifting his arms in defense. My apologies, I just have one last thing I need to check. Then go ahead and get it over with. Adrius lowers his head once more, and Leaf touches the small bit of horn one last time. This time he gently pushing and tugging on the sides. Do you feel any pressure? No. Leaf pulls his hand away and falls silent, not saying a word. Is that everything? Yes. How is it? Leaf takes a moment to respond before weakly coughing into his arm. Yep, it's not going to grow back. It may take a bit more time to heal than we originally thought. No growth formula. No, that would not be advised. It's best to let it happen naturally. I've been in contact with the royal smith to have a temporary prosthetic made. Your new crown will be will also be finished soon. As you requested, you will it will resemble the crown of your great grandfather. All right. Yes, very good. Adrius slides out of bed once more, standing up and walking over to the wardrobe in the corner. He pulls out the lowest drawer and lifts a pair of black trousers from it. So, where is Liz? I'd like to know if there is anything on the agenda today that I don't know about. Fortunately, I can tell you that personally. About an hour after noon, there are several citizens who have made appointments to speak with you and your counselors about certain matters. Adrius pulls the trousers up around his waist and buttons the top. He then reaches for a lilac shirt folded neatly in the middle, in the middle compartment. Other than that, it's a mostly uneventful day. However, I'm just not, I'm not just up here to check on your injuries. Oh? Liz was the one who sent me. She wishes to speak with you. She can come and see me whenever she likes. Edrius finishes putting on the first layer of clothing, then begins buttoning his vest. She was actually very insistent that you meet her in the court chambers. Edrius freezes while buttoning the last bust button on his vest. 
Very well. Has Bjorn recovered yet? No, I'm afraid he hasn't. Be sure to let me know as soon as he wakes. Of course. A few moments pa a few moments pass as Adrius progresses through the rest of the process of dressing himself. Are you well? Never better. Why? You seem a bit stressed. Adrius turns around, looking down at the bird. I'm only tired, that's all. Are you absolutely sure? Of course. Leaf rocks back and forth on his feet before prying again. I'm not just talking about your physical health. I wanted to know how you were doing after everything that's happened. Things haven't begun to slow down until recently, and ever since all this chaos was started, you seem... I'm fine, Leif. You can stop interrogating me now. Adrius makes his way to the door. I'll go see what Liz wants. Do you really plan on killing Lyle? Adrius whirls around, his cape twisting with his body. If it comes down to it, it's not something you should be worrying about. If the Heart's Cavalry captures Lyle alive, he'll get a fair trial. Like the trial Leuven was given? Adrius advances on Leif, looking down on him with cold, dark eyes. Leif, if I wanted your opinions on the current events, I would have appointed you as my advisor, not my physician. Alright, I'm gonna pause it right there, y'all. Oh boy, things are getting heated. Anyway, thank y'all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and check out our Patreon if you can. It always helps. Before I go, I'm going to give a quick shout out to our lovely bronze tier patrons. Thank y'all for I do for the channel. We greatly appreciate your support. Thank you to our silver tier patron, Cade Silverman. Thank you for going a bit above and beyond. It's greatly appreciated. Thank you to our gold tier patron, Tresum Guy. You're awesome. We love you. Thank you for subbing to Ultimate Tier. Anyway, if y'all want to get your names in the credits, get access to all of our not safe for more contents as little as $5. Alrighty, I love you all, and I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye bye.